Okay, the next little thing to learn is about sets. So um, when you're dealing with sets, a set is just a collection of numbers. So let's say uh, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8 could be a set. So it's just a collection of numbers. Um, but the important thing is to know how to combine them. So if you have the union of sets, Basically, that's going to be when you are combining both of the original sets. So it's a combo. And then the intersection is going to be when you're only looking at the things that overlap or only the things that both of the sets have in common. So if we go ahead and say that set A is 1, 2, 3, 5, and 8, and set B is 2, 3, 6, and 9, your union, you add everything together without, you know, repeating yourself. So don't say 1, 2, 2, because there's two twos. Just say 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 8, 9. So that's in your union. And then your intersection of sets is just what you have in common. So you've got a 2 in both sets and also a 3 in both sets. So it would just be 2, 3. So um, union, everything put together without repeating. Intersection is all that stuff that was repeating. Right, so next up are sequences. So when we talk about sequences, there's basically two kinds that you're going to be looking at for the test. So there's arithmetic and geometric. So in arithmetic sequences, you are adding or subtracting. So adding or subtracting. Um, in geometric, you're multiplying or dividing. So multiplying or dividing. Um, and for each of them, you have a formula. So you don't always have to use the formula, by the way. I'll show you both ways. Um, it depends on the kind of problem. But in an arithmetic, um, you're always going to use the formula a sub n, which is the nth term, which is probably what you're looking for, is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. So d is the difference. So that's what you're adding. Um, a sub 1 is the first term and a sub n is the nth term, or what you most of the time at least are looking for. Okay, in geometric, um, you're going to have similar things. So you're looking for a sub n. So a sub n is equal to a sub 1, the first term, times r, which is the rate or ratio, so what you're multiplying, to the n minus 1 power. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's use those formulas to look at a couple problems. Okay, so here's a sequence. 2, 9, 16, x, and then 30. So if we're trying to determine if this is arithmetic or geometric, uh, it doesn't seem to be geometric, so let's just double check. So 2 plus 7 is 9, plus 7 is 16, and then, you know, from there there's an x. So it seems to be arithmetic. Now we could plug all this into the equation, but this is an instance in which that's not really the best of ideas. So all you have to do is you find what your difference between your terms is, and it's 7, and then all you have to do is say, all right, well, 16 plus 7 should equal x, or 30 minus 7 should equal x, whichever way is fine. And so x is equal to 23. Now. If they were to give you the same same basic problem, so 2, 9, 16, let's say 23, 30, etc., and they say, uh, what is the 23rd term? That's when you want to use the equation. Because the only other option is to sit there with your calculator and go plus 7 plus 7 plus 7 plus 7 plus 7, plus 7 et cetera, et cetera. And you're pretty likely to uh, add an extra 7 or not add an extra 7, and, you know, problems. So in that case, I would go ahead and say, okay, so the 23rd term is going to be equal to the first term, which is 2, plus 23 is n, so 23 minus 1 times 7. Okay, so we would say, all right, that's 2 plus 22 times 7. 
So then we'd say, all right, uh, let's see, 2 plus 154 is equal to 156. And that would be our answer. And the same idea goes for geometric. So um, I'll go ahead and I'll erase this arithmetic side, and then we'll look at a geometric problem. So the same basic concept applies, that if you have x in the problem already, you don't want to use the formula. But if you don't have x in the formula, then that's when you would use your uh, equations. So let's say we have um, 500, 250x, and 62.5. So in this case, um, it's geometric, So, uh, and I can tell that because 250 is half of 500. So I know that I'm multiplying by 1 half. All right, so all you'd have to say is, okay, uh, 250 times 1 half is equal to x. And then if you divide that across, you get 125 is equal to x. Great. Okay. Let's say, though, that they don't give you x, and they ask you for the, uh, let's say, 12th term. Okay, so if we're looking for the 12th term, then all we have to do is figure out, okay, what is the ratio? So the important thing, actually, about both d and r is that they're always going to be adding or multiplication. So if you're dividing like we did, divide by 2, notice I wrote it as times 1 half instead of divided by 2 because it's always going to be multiplying by a fraction if you're really dividing. So uh, we would go ahead and plug this in. So a sub 12 is equal to a sub 1 which is 500 times r which is 1 half to the 12 minus 1 power. Okay, so then we've got 500 times 1 half to the 11th power, which would give us 500 times 1 over 2048, which if we go ahead and uh, just convert that into a decimal gives us approximately 0.244. So that would be our answer. So important thing to note on arithmetic and geometric is that you're always adding. So if you're subtracting, you're adding a negative number. And if you're dividing for geometric, you're multiplying by a fraction. Okay, very nice.